Good morning. Can everyone please start taking their seats? So, if I can ask for quiet, we are going to be broadcasting this live uh, via the web, so uh, what you say now can be heard, and uh, a welcome to our audience online. My name is uh, Dr. Philip Ducrow. I work in the Manson unit with MSF in London. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you here today. Um, this is the MSF Scientific Day South Asia, and it's a very exciting time. I, as many of you can see, I, I've been given a very special outfit. A friend gave it to me, and, and I got very excited when I saw it because I thought, wow, I'm being invited to a wedding. You know, it's something really important. But then the person said, well, actually, you're emceeing the MSF Scientific Day, and actually, if it's a wedding, it's going to be a little bit more fancy than what you're wearing. Actually, I think that's kind of appropriate because some of the research that MSF does, it's maybe not the most expensive garment in the shop. And one of the reasons why we hold this day is because we want to discuss the research that MSF does to try and make it better. So I really encourage you, if you're online, to be writing comments, to join in the discussion, and for those of you here also, we really welcome your questions. I do have a poster that I have uh, borrowed from online which gives a guide to asking questions. I do encourage you to read it. While it is slightly tongue-in-cheek, it does make the point that since we're limited for time today, please introduce yourself when asking questions. Please say which organization you're with and ask a short question. There will be time in the breaks and lunchtime for lots of discussion. We're not asking you to give a long opinion about things. We want to hear from the speakers and ask them probing questions. Um, when I thought about this and thinking about it being possibly like a wedding, I realized, like all MSFs, it's much more like an emergency than a wedding. As you can see, we're starting late. People are still filtering in. The instructions are there, but maybe some of us, like the MC, haven't read the instructions. So I thought when it's an emergency, we should, talk, we should turn to that instructional book from MSF about what are the priorities in emergencies. And it's important that we're all on the same page about the priorities. And of course, in an emergency, the priorities are water. It's a very hot day. There'll be plenty of water provided upstairs and hopefully at the back of the room later on. Keep yourselves hydrated. Food. We'll be providing plenty of food during the breaks, so don't panic. There's very good food. It will all be upstairs in the room above us. Sanitation. If you need to leave during the session, no problems. Just go upstairs and on the right you'll find the, the, the bathrooms. Coordination, that's my role. I'm gonna be trying to keep everyone to time. The first session is not, it's two uh, topics in one without a break. So please bear with us. There will be plenty of time for breaks, but try not to uh, introduce your own breaks. Um, also, we will have some surveillance, or at least what I call surveillance. Please do, if you have a phone, try and follow the online discussions and join in. If you're tweeting, then please use the hashtag, uh, hashtag MSFSciSA, which is in, in your notes. And there's a comments box on the live stream, so please use this as well. So, finally, why are we here? We are here I think primarily to take a chance to look at the medical work that MSF does and the evidence behind it. Quite a long time ago, I was privileged to start one of the first MDR-TB patients on treatment in one of MSF's programs here in India. And I think of that patient, he was a patient who had HIV. He was a patient who had suffered from stigma and wasn't allowed into many of the clinics around that program. He was a patient who'd been treated for TB and had paid in private clinics to the point of having no money left. He was a patient 
living at home with his family who didn't know that they could be acquiring what was drug resistant TB from him. That was a patient who had a body mass index of 13. And the program had never treated drug resistant TB before. We managed to start the treatment. The patient had many side effects, but eventually there was some successful outcome. But what I like about these conferences is it's a chance to say, well, why is that patient the minority? Because today, with MDR-TB, with many of the problems we will talk about today, access to the right treatment is actually only for the minority. And this conference is about bringing evidence to improve access to care. But secondly, when we provide that kind of treatment, like we see with, with many diseases, like the treatment we've had with leishmaniasis for many years or African sleeping sickness, we actually have tools that are not fit for the job. And it's research that highlights that and helps us call for better tools, more investment into research to bring better tools. I think today also reminds us that behind every topic like antimicrobial resistance or infectious disease or whatever title we put on a session, there is a patient, actually hundreds of patients, thousands of patients. And as we are hearing the presentations today, the panel discussions, I want you to be challenging and asking each of the presenters, but how does your research make a difference for a patient or for a program? This is about debate, taking evidence to make a difference for people and patients. Because the situation where people can drown in the sea, not that far from where the most powerful leaders in the world are meeting, and nothing really is said about it at that conference. The situation where people in Syria continue to suffer from attacks from weapons which nobody thinks should be used in any war. The situation where there are so many people who are denied passage to be able to flee from conflict or persecution. And those situations occur around the world. MSF is about Doctors Without Borders. And fundamentally, it's about a helping hand for people, whether that hand comes from medical care or changing policy or bringing attention. So with that little sermon out the way, I wanted to move on to our first session, and I'll invite uh, Dr. Uni uh, Karunakara up to speak to us. His bio is in the notes, more than two decades as a humanitarian and a fellow from Yale. Thanks, Uni.